हेलो एंड वेलकम टू द न्यू वीडियो दैट इज बायो वेवर्स दिस इज अ पार्ट वन ऑफ दिस वीडियो एंड आफ्टर वाचिंग दिस वीडियो यू विल एबल टू अंडरस्टैंड व्हाट आर बायो वेवर्स व्हाट आर देयर टाइप्स एंड द इंपॉर्टेंस ऑफ बायो वेवर इन द फार्मास्यूटिकल इंडस्ट्री मेनली इन दिस वीडियो द इंट्रोडक्टरी पार्ट विल बी कवर्ड एंड ईच एंड एवरी Biowaver type will have a separate video in upcoming days. So let's start to the video. What are biowavers? As always, it is said that something if you get in the waver, it will be advantageous or it will be very beneficial. So the as the name indicate biowaver. Biowaver are the waver to the bio studies or bio equivalent studies or bio availability studies. And if these biowavers are available to your formulation, then there is a no need to conduct the bio availability studies or bio equivalent studies. So by definition, biowaver means that the in vivo bio availability or bio equivalent studies. may be waived off or these are not considered necessary for product filing and the approval biowavers are based on and supported by some in vitro studies various types of in vitro studies are involved to support for the biowavers and based on these in vitro studies the biowaver can be applied for generic product biowaver can be applied from the product development stage but for the reference product or for the innovator product the biowavers are applied or can be given based on the acceptable bioequivalence studies on the research stage so please keep in mind that or remember that for innovator product biowavers are not given innovator product or 505 505 b2 type of product hybrid products are must required to conduct the bio availability or bio equivalence studies so bio waiver types are there mainly the bio waiver types are four i have found from the different literature present on the regulatory agencies websites and in the guidelines so biowavers are granted based on the doses forms so first is doses form biowaver then is bcs based biowaver that is biopharmaceutical classification system based biowaver which is applicable to bcs 1 class drug and bcs 3 class drug then additional strength biowaver this biowaver is given to the strengths other than the bioequivalence study strength then biowavers based on the in vitro studies these type of biowavers are given to the products which are having local action in the git and the products which may not get absorbed into the systemic circulation for those products biowaver based on the in vitro studies are given then coming to the formulation based biowavers these are given to the specific doses forms and mainly to the solubilized type of doses forms the formulations in which the drug is in solubilized form like parenteral solution intended to be solely administered by injection ophthalmic or otic solutions that means i or ear drops then solution for application to the skin and oral solution elixirs syrup tinctures a solution for aerosolization or nebulization or a nasal solution so in this category all the formulations are the type of formulation which contain a drug in the solubilized form so why then b is not required because as these are in solution form there is no hindrance of the solubility and no hindrance of the dissolution that's why the be 
that is bioequivalence study is self evident this is very very important that the b study is self evident for this solution formulations and there may not be the difference in the bioequivalence or bioavailability from the reference product that's why the these specific doses form have bio waivers requirements for these formulations to get bio waiver these are same drug concentration or label claim strength as per the rld so this is the very very common type of requirement for any generic product that the generic product should have same drug concentration a label claim strength and this should be as per the rld if you are making the strength other than rld it will go to 505b2 then absence of excipient or ingredient which may affect absorption or local effect of the formulation this means the excipients should not be there or excipient level should not be used in the formulation which may have effect on the absorption or local effect that's why qualitative and quantitative similarity to the rld is required it is known as q1 q2 similarity so q1 is qualitative and q2 is quantitative similarity it is must for this type of solution formulations to have a bio waiver then coming to the bcs based bio waiver. bcs is a classification system for the drug molecules which classifies drugs on the basis of their solubility and permeability so bcs1 classes of the drugs have high solubility and high permeability then bcs2 have low solubility and high permeability bcs3 have high solubility and low permeability and bcs4 have low solubility and low permeability so out of these four classes bcs based biovar are permitted for the drugs which have high solubility those are bcs class 1 and bcs class 3 so solubility is high and permeability is high for bcs 1 and low for bcs 3 then why these uh, biovars are granted to the formulation which contain bcs 1 or 3 drugs the logic is that if your formulation contain bcs 1 drug and if the dissolution is rapid that means if the drug formulation is showing more than 80% dissolution or drug release within 30 minutes then it will behave like a solution and that's why bio waiver is granted for such formulations then bcs3 for bcs3 solubility is high and permeability is low and if the drug formulation shows very rapid dissolution that is a more than 85% of the release or drug dissolution within 15 minutes then that formulation will also act as a solution and if it is showing a very rapid dissolution then dissolution rate will not affect the drug absorption or permeability and also permeability is a property of drug if you release the formulation very rapidly then it will get absorbed as per the absorption kinetics or permeability of the api and dissolution will not hinder that property that's why bcs based biovars are granted now see formulation which contain the bcs class 1 or 3 drugs the b is a self evident if the formulation bio as solution and dissolution is fast some of the requirements are there to have a bcs based biovar for these formulations same drug concentration label claim strength as per rld 
then contains BCS3 or 1 drugs with high solubility. Dissolution is rapid for BCS1 that is above 80% in 30 minutes and very rapid for BCS3 containing formulations that is dissolution above 80% or 85% in 15 minutes. Absence of an excipient or ingredient which may affect absorption or local effect of the formulation. Then qualitative and quantitative similarity to the RLD that is Q1 for BCS1 and Q1 and Q2 for BCS3. Q2 is required for BCS3 molecules or BCS3 drug formulations with some percentage difference allowed. So like SUPEC level 2 differences can be allowed for the formulations containing the BCS class 3 molecules. Then coming to the additional strength biomer, the additional strength are those strength of the formulations which are other than the B strength or the strengths other than the strength on which the bioequivalence study is performed and is passing. So formulation made in the multiple strength. B study is passing with one of the strength and waiver is given for other strength than the B strength. For example, you are preparing three strengths of the formulation that are 25 mg, 50 mg and 100 mg and you have performed a bioequivalent study on 100 mg strength. So you can ask for the bioever for 25 mg and 50 mg based on the requirements that acceptable bioequivalent study is performed on B strength that is 100 mg strength for example. Then proportional similarity of the formulation across all the strengths. Some people call it as dose weight formulation. Some people call it as scale up scale down formula and some people call it as the proportional formulation. Then all the strength have same manufacturing formula and same manufacturing procedure. Then all the strength have same dissolution testing and passes the requirement of dissolution. Then the additional strength by over can be given to the 25 mg and 50 mg strength. Now scale up scale down formula means if your 100 mg tablet weight is 200 mg and the lower strengths are proportionally dose weight. 100 mg tablet has 200 mg weight, 50 mg tablet has 100 mg weight and 25 mg tablet has a weight of 50 mg. So these are scale down formulation and if the other requirements are met then additional strength by over can be given to such products. Then coming to the biovers based on in vitro studies. See some of the formulation act by physical action in the GIT and that's why the bioequivalent studies cannot be performed or very difficult to be performed. Some of the product doesn't get absorbed into the uh, systemic circulation. For those products, these in vitro studies are performed and based on these in vitro studies, the waiver is given. One example is there, polycevalum tablets, tablets for suspension and chewable bar is present as a formulation and polystipol tablets. The exact requirements you can go to the product specific guidance and check there. In this video I have listed the requirements for your easy understanding. Same drug concentration label claim strength as per RLD. This is a simple requirement for all the products. Then these type of products should demonstrate the API sameness based on the fundamental reaction scheme, chemical structure and composition and physicochemical properties of the API. Then in vitro equilibrium binding study is required and comparative disintegration testing on 12 doses units each of all strengths of the test and reference product. So API sameness, in vitro binding study and comparative DT testing is required. 
so this is the requirement on in vitro studies and based on which the bio bio uh, bio waiver can be granted so we have seen the bio waiver based on the dcs bio waiver based on the additional strength bio waiver based on the in vitro studies and bio waiver directly for the some of the formulation in which the drug is present in the solubilized form so now we will see the importance of the bio waivers and advantages see always the b studies are costly so if you get bio waiver cost reduction will be there then time reduction will be there as b studies are time consuming human exposure to the drugs under b studies sometime healthy human uh, volunteers are taken into the b studies and sometime patients are included so unnecessary human exposure to the drugs under b studies will be reduced if you get the bio waivers then best use of the established iv ivc and science if you know that the solution form or bcs class of the drug and if you can prove the same on the basis of simple science which is already proven by iv ivc then no use of the b studies and overall time and costing will be reduced that's why the r and d will be faster that means faster development and the product will reach to the market in a short time of period so these are the advantages in summary we have seen the bio waiver meaning different types of bio waiver their importance and uh, specific examples we will see in the upcoming videos separate video i will make on the each and every bio waiver type in detail so stay tuned to this channel do like share and subscribe to pharma learning in depth channel and keep on watching the videos to have in depth understanding because these type of questions are always asked in the interviews thank you for watching this video